USDA's latest crop progress report rates 79% of Nebraska's soybeans as good to excellent, five points better than the national average. To learn what problems could potentially exist in fields across the state, we talked with Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Lauren Geisler earlier this week about soybean seedling diseases. Well, you know, we're starting to pick up the normal ones we see every year. So, you know, the, the Pythium is probably the one that's been most common thus far. Uh, we're seeing some Fusarium, some Rhizoctonia, and then, and still occasionally that Phytophthora. So just kind of depending on the soil temperature in the last few weeks, you know, that's what we're picking up. We're speaking on Monday. In what ways is this year different from a normal year of the growing season? <laughs> I'm about convinced there's not a normal year in the state of Nebraska, but you know, I think the biggest is, you know, just like la the last few years, we've had wet early. This year, our soil temperatures were warmer though, but we still had those excessive rain events, which really favor our water molds. So our, our Pythiums and Iphytophthoras when we get those heavy events. Um, the other thing is now, particularly here the next you know, week forecast, we're in over 90s, 100 degrees. These patches that have seedling diseases and, and have root rot and injury, you know, don't be surprised if we don't see some of those start burning up and, and thinning out a lot more than they are right now. Is, that a, is there a reason why they'll burn up so quickly? Well, they just don't have a root system, right? So early on, you know, if they had these, these wet conditions, they get those root infections, and then uh, you get all this heat and water demand, they can't keep up. So, you know, in some cases, I think some of those plants are gonna you know, literally just dry out, you know, due to, due to poor rooting. What does the farmer need to look for when he or she goes out to the field? I think the biggest thing is in any of these cases is to make sure you're identifying the problem correctly. So, uh, you know, if you, if you can't do that yourself, make sure you're using the diagnostic clinic at the university. You know, you can send those in and, and Kevin Course runs that. He can tell you exactly if it's Pythium, if it's Rhizoc, if it's Fusarium, uh, if it's Phytophthora, and then matching those seed treatments up in the future. Uh, the other thing, because of these heavy rain events, we are seeing quite a bit of PPO injury again, which we've seen the last few years, you know, and that's our pre-emergent herbicides that are put on, and then with those excessive rains, we get that injury, and that can look a lot like seedling disease. So again, just make sure that you're identifying it correctly so you can manage it right in the future. How effective have you found seed treatments to be over the years? Over the years, and you know, you see different reports. I just heard, you know, another state, you know, an agronomist, per, you know, uh, saying you should use them all the time. Uh, I haven't seen that that's the case, you know, in all of our work. Now, if you're planting early, and if you're planting early, and particularly, you know, in cooler soils, that's where those seed treatments are going to really pay. Uh, we've got a lot of grounds in Nebraska that, you know, still, if, if they're in there when soil temperatures are warmer, closer to 60 degrees, and they're planting beans, they're going to come right out of the ground and be fine. So I don't see it in all cases that you need it. Uh, but there's a lot of acres out there that do benefit significantly from seed treatments. And then again, you know, making sure that you got the right one. And then if you have Phytophthora, we're going to make sure we use a resistance package in there. So, you know, just kind of matching that up. Is that the answer to the farmer who might have this problem year after year, or at least rotation after rotation, finding this problem consistently? If you have this problem, you know, even I would say in the last five years, if you've had a significant stand problem, I would always use a seed treatment. Okay. Uh, and then again, if you're, if you're identifying it correctly, then just always use that treatment. That's the best thing you can do. Now, if you get a year, you know, like this year, you may have used a seed treatment and you have excessive rains, you still may have a problem and have to replant. The CropWatch website has more resources on soybean seedling diseases. We'll link to that information on the Market Journal homepage.